after me again. Here's what we're going to use to cut the trim. I went to the store and got the trim. And I'm just going to use this little back saw. It's a little back saw and it comes with a miter box, a plastic miter box little unit here. I've screwed this on top of uh, a couple 2x4s. You can take a 2x6 or a 2x8, screw that down and just to protect it from the floor. And it has, I can cut straight, I can cut at a 45 right here, both directions. I can cut this way. I even made a 22 and a half degree cut in here. I measured that and I cut that in there just in case I want to use that too. But um, this really works well. It's less than $10. I told you I was going to get you something that was fairly inexpensive to do your project and you don't need anything more than this. It's not going to make a whole lot of mess and you don't have to worry about an electric chop saw or anything like that or to rent one if you don't have one or to cut your finger off or anything like that. You can take this up where your work area is. It's not going to make very much dust. And it's not very noisy either in case you need to do it at night and you don't want to wake anybody up or make, a, make, make all this noise. So get one of these for your little projects. You know, it really works out good. Here's my trim I'm going to use. This is called quarter round. Now you don't have to use this. You can get something else like this. But I went to the store and this is pre-finished white. It's not even wood. It's kind of a, a plastic that's all been bonded together. And it's pretty much the same color as my baseboard, as a matter of fact. So I don't even think I have to paint this. Now this, if you had to paint it, it paints up really nice. And I would suggest painting it first before you cut and install it up against your other baseboard. But it's called quarter round because it's, it's a quarter of a circle. You put four of these together and it will make a circle. That's why it's called quarter round. And I've got a piece here. All my inside corners, I make a 45 on there. And so I'm just going to put this in here and I'm just going to cut it off. Got to hang on to it nice and tight and just cut this off. Just little short strokes and hang on to it. There's my first cut. Now, granted, there's a little bit of a slop in here, like a very minute amount. So, is this a perfect 45 every single time? No, but it's 98% of 45. And on all your inside corners, you're probably going to caulk them anyways. And this, this will really do. You don't need to do much more than this when you're cutting this trim. Now my wall, I, I've got this, uh, it was pre-finished pieces at the hardware store, it came eight foot long, but my walls are like ten and a half feet long, eleven feet long, and so I'm going to look at their pre-finished cut, and it's probably okay, but I'm just going to look at it, it looks slightly off, so I'm just going to cut a little bit of that off, and I'm just going to cut it square here. You could cut it at a 45 degree corner angle if you want. A lot of times people do that where the two joints uh, go up together. That way if it ever moves, you've got some backing behind there of the other 45. But you know what? This is just a little stop up against the baseboard. And uh, I'm deciding this time just to cut it straight off. Now once I cut that, I've got a little wood rasp, and this works really well just to clean up the edges. This is plastic, and you've got to kind of clean it off just a little bit, you know, because the plastic trim wants to kind of fold back sometimes. You'll see when you start cutting, but you don't have to do it much. What I like about this is it's rough on one, one end, and then it's smoother here, so if I have to 
rasp a whole lot, I'll use that edge. Then I flip it around and it's got kind of a concave area here, and that's good too. Uh, I use that quite a bit. If I'm digging a lot, then I can then I only dig a little bit at an angle, at an angle, at an angle, and then that helps cut the wood as I move along, so I don't have to just use a flat edge all the way. And then um, it's also smooth on this other side, and this is good for metal too. Um, so these don't cost very much either, and it's a good tool to have when you're doing this trim. This is so nice just to cut this trim right here. I don't have to set up a big old saw and all that kind of stuff and make all kinds of dust. So I like using this. It's, it's fine when I'm doing one little room like this or if you're doing two small rooms. You know, if you had a whole house to do, yeah, I probably would not recommend you doing it this way. You know, but if you only have a few cuts to do, do it this way. I would not invest in a chop saw if you're not going to use use it that much. If you've just got a couple little knick-knack jobs to do every once in a while, this will do it. And then if you've got a whole house to do, and let's say um, you still don't want to buy a saw, uh, a miter box, chop saw, electric, you can rent one for a couple days way cheaper than buying one and then storing one, especially if you're not going to use it much. So things to consider before you start investing your money in your tools.